Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show. This week we are looking at the topic of the impact of a vaccination rollout and its impact on stocks, on the economy and on people. Is it a rollout? Is it a stroll out? Take a listen and you decide. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Money and Investing Show with me, your host, Andrew Baxter, and as always, my co-host and offsider, Mitchell Lorenzo. Pleasure to be here, Mr. Baxter. Thank you very much. It's been a while. Today, topic of conversation, we've all seen the news unless you've been living under a rock, and that is Australia's vaccine rollout. Yeah, I'm not so much uh, a fan of the term rollout. I think stroll out would probably be, uh, probably be a better term for that, but it's been pretty slow, hasn't it? That's it's... a good title for this podcast, mm. vaccine rollout or stroll out. The jury's out. It's interesting, isn't it? Here we are in Australia. We've been at the vanguard, uh, if you will, of dealing with COVID. You know, I think between Australia and New Zealand, we've probably been the envy of the world. Um, you know, sometimes being down here in the Antipodes is, is, yeah, that remoteness is not a bad thing, and it's certainly paid off in spades. Um, but you know, relying on self-isolation uh, on a national perspective versus uh, opening up an economy yeah, is, is an interesting one. I'm sure we'll dive into that, that's for sure. That's probably a good place to start because Australia and, and, and New Zealand have been at the vanguard of, of keeping this thing at bay because we are islands, as you mentioned, we've locked our borders down, happy days. But at what cost? Mm-hmm. Because these sporadic lockdowns that we see aren't just a lockdown for three days, there's effect on the economy and the stock market, but more importantly, people as well. Absolutely. So how do we actually measure the effect of these, AB? Look, it's an interesting one, isn't it? And we'll, we'll dive into economics and the stock market, but the big one is people. You know, you can beat your chest as a politician and say, look, we've kept our people safe, albeit from a virus. And look, I guess a great place to put a caveat on here, irrespective of what your stance is, whether you're pro-vaccination, whether you're anti-vaccination, whether you're a conspiracy theorist, or whether you're just buying into the fact that there's this virus out there that's causing damage, the reality is this is impacting on people's lives significantly. And, and whilst the politicians may beat their chest at you know, infection levels and containment, the human cost, the psychological damage uh, which is being done uh, is huge. You know, humans uh, by and large are gregarious. They mix with people, they're social, and that's something that's been robbed. Not so much in Australia, but when you look globally, like my father lives in the UK, and effectively they've had 18 months of lockdown, albeit with a sort of couple of weeks last summer, and they're just opening up their economy again now, given the vaccination programs moved through, and the psychological weight of that, of not being able to see your family, um, of having to isolate and not having that day-to-day contact with people is an immeasurable variable that perhaps we won't see the statistics on for a good five or 10 years when you look at mental health on the back of it. So there's a huge human cost here too. Absolutely, I mean, it's important to note, even speaking anecdotally, I've mm. got a lot of friends and family who live in Melbourne, nowhere near the extent of the UK, but nonetheless, 18 months on and off of lockdowns. Yeah. H- horrible, I mean, they're just the worst experience ever. And, and again, it's, it's that psychological damage. Um, you know, if you're a business owner, you know, if you've been an employee when we've had a, 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 you know, a job keeper uh, allowance there to sort of keep some money coming in the door, that's one thing. But as an employer running a business, uh, you know, and if you take something, you know, literally no pun intended, meat and potatoes like running a restaurant, um, you buy all your produce in, ready to sell it to your customers, only to have the door drop to say you're shut, no one's coming in that money that you fronted up for buying all the produce, you still gotta pay for it. And likely you're gonna be throwing it out. A lot of the businesses down there actually cooked for charity and gave the food away to good causes. And it says a lot about people's human spirit in that regard. So that, and, and that's not once, that's four times down there. So that psychological, there's hope coming, there's light at the end of the tunnel, bang, she shut down, is, is huge. And I think a lot of us around the country, particularly where we live, where we haven't had to deal with that that much, um, you can almost be blasé about it. And, and, and in fact, you know, you look at the way that Sydney's dealing with its so-called lockdown at the moment, it's pretty blasé compared to what we saw in Melbourne. You know, there's still large groups of people not following protocol and doing all this sort of stuff because oh, it'll pass over. Well, what if it doesn't? Well, I think the only real answer to that is to get people with jabs in their arms. And if we can... You're not going to win any friends with that. Oh, I know, yeah. but yeah. I mean... Ultimately, that, that is the answer, right? As simple as that, get people with jabs in arms, we can do things. That's exactly right. I mean, you can lock down and you know, we've seen our, our immigration numbers uh, or people that are able to fly into Australia halved again, so 3,000 arrivals a week now. Um, and, and you can run that siege mentality. As I say, New Zealand and Australia have done it very well in, in this first phase of something I suspect we're going to be living with for the, at least the next decade. Um, and, and, and in doing that, Yes, it's, it's ensured that you know, infection levels and, and, and the economy per se in different countries, is, uh, the two countries has run okay. Um, but it's not sustainable. Are you just gonna cut yourself off from the rest of the world forever? And the only way out of that is through a vaccination program, a mass vaccination program, and we're starting to see 
that that policy is bearing fruit in some of the more populous countries around the world, and indeed countries that have really borne the brunt of the virus and had high mortality rates and, and economies that really have been in lockdown, and that will be the UK and the US for sure. And the UK, I think, are nearly 50% vaccinated. The US, I do know, have vaccinated successfully 47% of their population. Yeah. Here in Australia, only 7%, so well, they're actually seven times yeah. better off. It, it, it's a stroll out, isn't it? I mean, it's a stroll really, out. It's a, it, there's no reason for it to take so long. And I think what it's probably highlighted, and this is where some major risks, let's talk about trading and the economy in a moment. Um, this is where some of the big risks in our economy sit. Um, we're in a country which, to all intents and purposes, is almost anarchy. We have a federal government that's been duly elected to run the country that has no power at all. And that's been highlighted massively through this, where each individual partisan state can say and do as they please. They can lock their borders as they please. They can support vaccination or they can put up a very, very confusing message to stop people getting vaccinated. Uh, undermining the effectiveness of a federal government. And, and the challenge with this, Mitch, is that from, a, from anyone looking from the outside in, we've gone from being on the winner's dais of these guys have done a terrific job to managing uh, COVID uh, by keeping you know, what we've done here in Australia particularly, to being you know, bottom of the runner-up table by not being able to get a, a vaccination program actually rolled out in any meaningful way. And the effect on the economy is that overseas investors, particularly looking at Australia, well, the sovereign risk, the economic risk of investing there is it's an ungovernable country, which is insane because we live in a democracy and, and we live in previously what would have been stated as a very robust, well-run, uh, well-regulated, stable country. And now we're in a situation, well, who's running the joint? It's a great Bar question. Barnaby's back. Barnaby's back. And we love Barnaby. <laughs> it's a matter of, I think, you know, personally speaking, you know, you've got to play defense for a while. The, the, the virus is brand new. Yeah. You've got to play defense, batten down the hatch. But now's the time when we've got the vaccines to really yeah. have a crack at, at beating this thing. Then comes the question, AB, is what kind of effect on the economy is a 7% vaccination rate mm. uh, going to produce compared to a nearly 50% vaccination in the US? Mm. Let's, let's compare the two. Well, in the US, you've got an economy that's opening up. People are getting out and about. Uh, and as such, you know, the types of businesses that effectively have been mothballed. And you know, I think Australia's been in a very fortunate position where our economy is absolutely booming. Low interest rates, massively strong property market. And we've talked about all these things before. You know, booming commodity sector, or iron ore specifically. So things have been incredibly strong, surprisingly strong, I guess, in a mainstream economy. Um, and, and, but uh, there are businesses that are still obviously suffered. If you're in the travel space, and we've got clients, uh, we've, got great, we've got great clients, good, good people down in the South Island of New Zealand, done. Uh, we've got another guy that's in the corporate travel space that we speak with, and, and there's just no business to be done right now. So you go, okay, well, they're just in the travel space. But then you look at the airline sector as well, where you know, all of a sudden any internal flights, not talking overseas, it's all shut, done. And, and that provisioning and that furloughing of, of staff is, is, is huge. So again, you know, from an economics point of view, it's created a very two-tier type system. If you look at shopping centers, for example, Chadstone, market value has gone from being over $6 billion vicinity, one of the owners of Chadstone, um, you know, back in 2019, they got a shopping center that's only worth $3 billion, and I suspect it will continue to drift down as people's shopping habits have changed. And look, that may be evolution in terms of how people choose to spend money more and more online, but it's kind of almost been forced on the situation too by people not physically being able to go there too. Okay, so there's, you know, there are two factors. There's an evolution in people and their journey in using technology to shop uh, at the expense of going there physically, but there's also been no choice in that. So this is a play um, that's very much pushed the tech sector along. Now, where does that leave us from an investment perspective? For us, um, you know, growth stocks have been hampered some, whereas in the US we've seen those growth stocks really start to fire. March, as, April, they did very uh, well. Unbelievable on, on the rollout of that virus. So there's a sector that's run very, very well. And I suspect as we as we uh, see a, a, a further push out of our vaccination program here at some point, maybe one day, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that, that we start to see those growth pipe plays really kick into gear and move along here. So there's definitely going to be a, a sector rotation. I know we're probably jumping ahead a little bit about where the money's made. But this is a huge thing to understand. It does directly impact on the economy and it certainly impacts on specific stocks too. So as a question, just mm. to put this into perspective, AB, what kind of cost are we talking about economically when we have these snap lockdowns? Mm. Well, the, the hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars a day. Uh, and, That's crazy. Isn't it? And, 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 and you look at retail, which has really done it pretty tough. 
um, you know, and, and, and I listened to a great interview the other day uh, with uh, the owner of uh, the, the brand collective, and they own things like Super Dry, amongst other things. Uh, and you know, a snap lockdown is costing them you know, millions a week in that business. Um, just to give you an example of one small player in the retail space. Crazy. So, so there is a huge cost to this, and it's the uncertainty. Markets don't like uncertainty. Businesses don't like uncertainty, and you just don't know where you're going because there's one set of rules here, which then change track very dramatically and very quickly at short notice for for no real reason. And the the best proxy as a representation of that is the stock market, as mm. we know. You take the U.S. market, the S and P 500, the broad market index in the U.S. Mm. At the time of this recording, it's just hit its sixth straight day of record highs. Mm versus the Aussie market, which has really been pretty range bound and meandering at these levels that we currently sit at. Look, we've had a great run, let's face it, from you know, March last year to where we are has been nothing short of stellar. Uh, and maybe we are seeing a bit of a pause for breath, but it's also causing investors to say, well, you know, <laughs> like if this is gonna be the game for the rest of the year, we're probably pretty much t sort of tapped out here in Australia, we're gonna look overseas. In fact, do you know one of the big ones we saw, you know, Sydney airports a takeover bit. So here's an example where you've got, you know, a world-class asset, also world-class fees to park there too. <laughs> um, but you've got a world-class asset and, and it's almost a predatory takeover because its valuation has been smashed around. Like, you know, and the share price has jumped 35% on that Crazy. takeover bit. Just We've got a trade on Sydney airport. We do. Um, nice plug. Thanks. Well done, good trade. Thanks. Um, and um, the, um, <laughs> do your lap of honor. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the reality is that, yeah, there's beat down prices in these assets. And if it stays within Australia, which in this case, you know, uh, that, that asset is looking to, that's okay. But when you start to get predatory purchasing from overseas at beaten down Australian assets, that does also become a problem. And I wouldn't be surprised if you were cynical to say that may be a game plan that certain countries may have. You know, get that economy beaten down, just start to buy everything at bargain basement prices and you can tie the whole thing up. Which represents an opportunity for us, of course, as retail investors. And you talk about growth stocks maybe being the play in mm. the future as we get more vaccine rollouts. What kind of stocks or sectors are you looking at, AB, as that growth play future? Sydney airports, obviously. Sydney yeah. airports? <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, yeah, but th th those sort of stocks that are going to benefit from more traditional type of foot traffic. Uh, and look, for, for, for years I've said department stores have done, and I don't think that's the story that's going to change. It, all this has done is just sped up their demise. Sure. Um, but you know, businesses that benefit from people being around and about. So I think you know, in the in the hospitality space in particular, it, it is one area where there's going to you're going to see some recovery. I think um, you know, secondly, um, in the in the in, uh, the travel space again being another big one, and being in our own country, we've supported our own travel industry pretty well because that's all we can do, uh, and that's had a reasonable run through. But I think there's quite some reasonable catch-up value there too because people are still pretty uncertain. You look at companies like Flight Center, for example, you know, and, and Qantas, they're beaten down pretty hard. And, and as things relax and you can start to move around, they will enjoy a recovery. And again, the tenor of this whole conversation isn't about, oh, you know, is, is this about making money or is it about human lives? Oh, you open up the economy and you run the risk of human lives. Well, if you get a vaccination program in play, you kind of the human element. Of, you, yeah. You're managing the, the health aspect of it and you're opening your economy up. But at the moment, it's you can either have a strong economy or you can have you know, a, a welfare mindset. And those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. We get our act together, roll out a decent vaccination program, boom, that's sort of that on the, on the health and well-being side of it. And your economy will benefit from it too. We can't survive just by putting up the bar wire fence and going, no one, no, we're closed, don't come. Especially in uh, you know up here in Queensland, where you know tourism is such a huge part of the economy, and yeah, you know, and you listen to the state premiers and the one up here talking about oh you know look how strong our economy is going. Go up to North Queensland and talk about some talk to some of the people up there running resorts how they feel about that. Talk about the Barrier Reef uh, and how the tour operators up there are handling things. So, you know, it's, you've got to get your feet on the ground and see what's going on, and you know it's it's in a very very dire state. Vaccine rollout or stroll out, I think quite clearly it has been a stroll out, mm -hmm. and we've seen that really reflected in our numbers, AB. So. Mm -hmm. As we come to the end of the broadcast, we've spoken about the human element, but also the economic and, mm. and money element being in the stock market. Where do you see this moving next? I know we, we don't like talking about state government, but that seems to be the talk of the town as to what state government is doing next. Yeah. What, what kind of future do you see for us here? Gee whiz, this isn't a really open-ended question. It is. We Two love... hours to cover the answer to it? I think we can. Production guys let us go for that long? I'm not so sure. We'll see how we go. I think, you know, if you're half smart, 
um, and there's an oxymoron on this and, and, and you're in the federal government, um, you'd be using this as an opportunity to shut state government down once and for all. It's an unnecessary layer of government. Have local government, have federal government. All states do is, is create a, 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 a clog up in the pipeline to get rid of it. Then you've got a uniform set of rules everywhere, which is as it should be, and things will run a lot more easily. Um, I think, yeah, as a nation, we've just got to, yeah, we've just changed the words in our national anthem for, from being young and free to being one and free. And I think there's ever been a time in Australia's history where we've been less united than what we are right now. You've got both sides of the camp, vaccinations or non-vaccinations, conspiracy and government power grab versus the government need to do a power grab and get the state stuff sorted out. Um, industries that are doing incredibly well and people that literally are on the bare bones of their backside. So th there's never been a time where it's been a them and us across so many different parallels. And getting that sort of consistent policy to create a level of certainty for our economy, for our people, for people's well-being, that yes, you can come and see your impending birth of your granddaughter or grandson or you can go to a wedding, or you can go to a funeral without it being the headlines in a paper where they've had to lobby and plead and da da da. Let's get back to some level of normality and a vaccination program, as we've seen in the US, is likely to facilitate that. And it's not going to be perfect. And this is one of the biggest challenges, whether we're talking about running a country, whether we're talking about running a business, whether we're talking about being a trader or just a human being. If your model, if your target of what you're aiming for is perfection, Nothing is going to work because perfection doesn't exist. All right? You've got to set the benchmark lower than that. You've got to have something that's going to be flawed, but by and large is going to get the job done. And that's how you, know, you set goals, whether it's in the personal development space, whether it's running your business, whether it's running a country, whether you look at the economy. We can't have perfection where we've got something that's 100% safe because it's been sped up and pushed through to deal with a very immediate problem. At the same time, if you don't have that and you go we can't go down this pathway of having an imperfect vaccination program we'll just slug it out you've got an imperfect economy which is going to gradually implode because you can't live in isolation in the global world you simply can't do that so you know there needs to be a meeting of the mind people do need to get back on the same page and very sadly we're in a society that's just so massively divisive you can't have a conversation with someone that's not on the same page as you without it being arms folded and I'm not even prepared to listen to you because you're wrong you know mm. we've got to get back in the middle we're a country that's a world-beating country we've got the oldest people on the planet in so far as being able to survive in extremely difficult conditions so Australia's always been uh, able to deal with tough times and as our economy has grown we've been an innovator in turning ourselves into the salad bowl of the world the mineral resourcing place of the world and, and a country that's been on the pedestal with the rest of the world looking at us with envy as to what we've been able to do that's what it looks like from the outside Yet internally, we can't even get our act together and get straight. We need to get back together as a group. Our economy will benefit from it. Jobs will benefit from it. People will be happier. The stock market will continue to roar and we'll have something that we can be really proud of. But there needs to be unity for that. And that's pretty hard to sell. Great advice, AB. I think that's totally true. It's a vaccine stroll out. It needs to be a rollout and that's gonna benefit everyone. I really appreciate your advice. A lot of moving parts there, but certainly very beneficial. Thank you. Absolute pleasure, anytime. There you have it, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, hit the notification button to stay across what we're up to.